All right, guys, we are going to learn today how to log into our online world history textbook and actually how to use the online world history textbook. So let me bring up my screen here. And this is all going to be in the Word document that's on your Schoology page for your class, whatever period that may be. So this is what it's going to look like if you click on the, the link that's in your Word document. You notice it's called my ng connect it's national geographic we have our username and our password you will make sure that you put in the username and password exactly the way it is on your word document so there's our username our password everyone's used the same username and password once i have that in i go ahead and click on the big blue button that says sign in now you notice it says backpack this is kind of, if you've ever used Edmodo or some other um, online tools, they have a backpack. Well, our backpack has our online textbook, and we're going to use the one that says English E Edition. And it says World History, Great Civilizations, and it has a big Chinese dragon on it. So we won't go ahead and click on that. That's when we do things with our textbook, that's what we're going to use. Now, here it is, and it's set out by units, and you notice each unit will tell you what chapters are involved, the title of the unit, and the time period that's covered in the unit. Now you're gonna notice on the far left-hand side, a couple little buttons here. This one is gonna give us a table of contents, kinda of like a regular book would. If you click on them, you'll get different things. You can always go here to find a different chapter if you need to, to go back and do anything. If you click on it again, It'll take it away. Now these two little arrows are going to be handy. This is going to make your screen go into full screen, which is going to make it easier to look at things. So they'll go ahead and click on that. And let's go ahead and click on unit one, because that's what we're going to be starting with here. Now, a couple of things here. You see these different little icons here. Anytime you see one of these, that is a speaker. If I click on it, I'm going to get a little play button here. If I click on it, this is what's going to happen. Unit one, origins of cultures and civilizations. It just read me the title of unit one. Now, if I click on the little play button here, it's going to bring me up a video. And this is about a paleontologist. So if we just go ahead and click on it real quick. I work in East Africa, in Northern Kenya. So there we look what it's going to do is it's going to play a video about this this woman and her job as a paleontologist what a paleontologist does so if you're not sure what a paleontologist does that would be a good great place to, to check it out and see what she does for a living so if i close that button if i click on this it's going to read this entire little section right here to me if i click down here it's going to read this critical viewing thing now we have two buttons here the top button is always going to take us to the next page. The bottom button is going to take us to the page that we were on before this one. But we're going to click on the top page because we're going to go to the next page here. Little something, little timeline about this time period. If I click on each little of the plus marks, I'm going to get a little caption here. And if I click on the speaker button. Circa 15,000 BC, Lascaux Cave paintings are created. It's going to tell me about the Lascaux Caves in France. Very important because this is a record of um, how prehistoric people lived. And if I keep doing that, there's different ones here and there. So if you want to check that out, you're more than welcome to do so. If I click on the, the arrow to go to the next page, here's something about the Ice Age. But this time, if I click on it, it gives me some pictures. And if I click on the this series shows how moving ice sheets formed the Great Lakes and Niagara Falls, a process that took thousands of years. Pretty cool. So if I close it up that way, go to the next page. This is going to take us to chapter one. Now chapter one has two sections. Now if I click on the speaker here, it's going to read me what chapter one, the title, time period, each section is going to tell me the key vocabulary word. So if you're not sure how to pronounce something, this is a good place to click. Because you might not know how to say anthropologist. It's going to tell you how to say it. It's going to read through both of these. 
it's gonna this down here you really don't have to worry about this is cool it'll tell you about what the picture is all about some other things about maps and that we don't have to quite worry about that just yet so we want to go on to chapter one section one and this is going to kind of tell us how to use the textbook so notice there's a couple different colors on here some different little buttons and whatnot now of course we have the speakers again now this speaker is just going to read about the Great Rift Valley, which is in Africa. This is more in reading these questions off. You don't have to worry about those. Now, here's the really cool one. This is going to read the entire section to you. So if you're not sure about what you're reading, this is a great place to go. It's going to read from the, the title, which is always going to be in green. So the title of this section is Discovering Prehistory. It's going to read you the main idea. And the main idea of this section is the evidence uncovered by scientists help us learn about our early human history. So that's what we're gonna learn about. So next color, kind of a bluish, lightish bluish color. These are our subheadings. And this is gonna be more of a specific topic. So you notice we have two of them. We have geological and archeological time and origins in Africa. So if I read under geological and archeological time, that's what I'm gonna find out about. Geological time is about Earth, you know, how the, the Earth is formed and all that. Archaeological time is about studying <coughs> excuse me, the past. So that's what you archaeologists use. Now, you're going to notice inside this little subheading, we have two colors. We have black and we have black words that are highlighted in yellow. Anytime you see a black word or black words, it's an important idea, group of people, thought. So the first one is Homo sapiens and then it's gonna tell us right underneath what it is. Now anything in yellow is a vocabulary word. Now there's two ways you can go about looking at this. You can click on the individual vocabulary word and then you notice it's gonna, if I click on the speaker. Fossil, the preserved remains of ancient animals and plants. It's gonna tell me what a fossil is. Now if you click the MT, it's going to put all of those right, all of my vocabulary words right here. And if I click on each one. Artifact, an object made by humans from a past culture. It's going to read them all to me. If I click that MT again, it's going to take it away. If I click on this one, you notice it does the same thing. So anytime we do note taking and you find the word that's in yellow and you're reading and it matches up with your note taking, you can either click on the word itself or you click on the MT and it's going to show all of them right there. It's pretty nifty and makes things a lot easy, easier to find. That way you don't have to go back into your, your index, your glossary and all that to find things. So if we click on the next arrow again, looking at section two, same type of setup. If I click on the green button here, it's going to read the entire thing to me. If I click on this, it's going to, Tell me about this picture here. If I click on the individual vocabulary word, same thing. It's going to show me that word. If I click the MT, it's going to show me all the vocabulary words for that section. So it's pretty intuitive the way this works. You know, if I just keep clicking, it's just going to keep me, taking me to the next section of chapter one. Same thing, if you look at it, same type of setup. We have the name of the section, subcategories or, or subheadings, the important vocabulary words, the important ideas or places. We've got pictures we can look at and they can read it off to us. So it's really, really handy, this online book, instead of using, well, of course we won't be in class, so this is the way we're gonna have to go about doing this. But the Word document is going to be in your Schoology um, page for your class. It'll say how to log into the online textbook. This video will be on there as well. That way, if you have any questions, if you get how to do this, it'll be there. And if you have any questions, please contact me through a message, through Schoology, through your school email. That way, if you have any questions, we get it all taken care of. Just makes things a lot easier 
So that's how we log in. That's how we use our textbook. Hopefully that helps.